The United States and Nazi Germany were in a race during World War II to develop the first atomic weapon. It was the U.S.'s top secret program, the Manhattan Project, that ended up winning. In August 1945, two of these atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, bringing an end to World War II. The dropping of these new weapons was one of the most important historical events of the 20th century. The Manhattan Project was developed at three different locations across the United States, Hanford, Washington, Los Alamos, New Mexico, and Oak Ridge, Tennessee. In December 1938, German scientist Lies Menard and Otto Hahn discovered nuclear fission, the reaction where the nucleus of an atom splits into smaller nuclei and releases a very large amount of energy. Leo Szilard, a Hungarian physicist, determined that this chain reaction could be harnessed to a very powerful weapon. He wrote a letter with Albert Einstein to send to President Franklin D. Roosevelt in August of 1939, warning that with this technology, an extremely powerful bomb could be built. Roosevelt, fearing that the Germans were already working on such a bomb, formed the Advisory Committee on Uranium, which convened for the first time on October 21, 1939. On December 7, 1941, Imperial Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, which brought the United States into the war. The Advisory Committee on Uranium determined that it would be possible to design build, and use an atomic bomb before the conclusion of the war. The Army Corps of Engineers created the Manhattan Engineer District in Manhattan, New York. Scientific, military, and industrial resources were combined in this focused undertaking. Despite involving hundreds of thousands of workers throughout the United States, England, and Canada, the Manhattan Project largely remained a secret. Scientists believe that there were two possible directions to build an atomic device. The first design used uranium-235 isotope, and the other path used plutonium, which had just recently been discovered. Both devices used uncertain designs, were very expensive, and there was no guarantee that they would detonate. It was decided to pursue both designs and construct three primary sites to support the Manhattan Project in the United States and several smaller locations around the U.S. and the world. Three rural sites were required for the project and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers began to search the nation for these locations that met the requirements needed to build the bombs. Land was taken from tribes, farming communities, and homesteaders using eminent domain by the federal government. Some of the displaced people only had 30 days to leave and they were not well compensated for their homes. Indigenous people lost access to their sacred lands. The three sites were Oak Ridge, Tennessee, Hanford, Washington, and Los Alamos, New Mexico. At Oak Ridge, Tennessee, a very large industrial facility was built to enrich uranium and eventually become the center of the project. To improve the chance of success, three different uranium enrichment processes were developed in parallel. Methods to produce small amounts of plutonium were also developed at Oak Ridge. A massive industrial facility was built at Hanford, Washington, only six months after ground broke for the Oak Ridge facility. The Hanford Industrial Complex was tasked with producing plutonium, Hartford had a huge production reactor, chemical separator plants, and fuel fabrication plants. Production of both uranium and plutonium was slow and complex despite the speed at which these two facilities were built. Not until the middle of 1945 was enough material created for the assembly of the first nuclear bomb. Los Alamos was the bomb design and development laboratory this was set up in 1943 by General Groves and had the world's most preeminent nuclear scientists, all led by Robert J. Oppenheimer. The lab was situated at the top of the Pajarito Plateau in a remote part of New Mexico. 
Endless amounts of calculations, prototypes, and tests were required to obtain the perfect shape and size of the bombs. One of the methods used was the gun method. It was used for creating critical mass and a subsequent explosion using uranium. A hollow cylinder of uranium, the bullet, was shot into a solid cylinder, the target of the same material, which would then start the fission process. Although 64 kilograms of uranium was used, less than a kilogram underwent the nuclear fission. This gun method was found not to work using plutonium. For plutonium, a very complicated implosion device was developed. The plutonium bomb was an implosion type nuclear weapon. A ball of subcritical plutonium was placed in the center of a hollow sphere. Several explosive charges were then placed around the surface of the sphere and were detonated at the same time, creating powerful compressive pressure on the plutonium sphere, squeezing it and increasing its density. Once this happened, the plutonium would become supercritical and result in a nuclear explosion. On July 16, 1945, at 5.29 a.m., the Manhattan Project team tested a plutonium atomic bomb at the Trinity site in southern New Mexico. This explosion started the nuclear age with the world's first human-created nuclear explosion. A uranium atomic bomb named Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima at 8.15 a.m. on August 6, 1945. Three days later, a plutonium bomb named Fat Man was detonated over Nagasaki at 11.03 a.m. The dropping of these two bombs brought World War II to an end. The SFCC Veterans Legacy Program has identified three veterans from New Mexico who were part of the Manhattan Project. Edith Ernestine Berwick enlisted in the Women's Army Corps, WAC, on May 11, 1944, and trained at Fort Oglethorpe in Georgia. After training, she served in New Mexico to work for the Manhattan Project. She started an inventory control in Los Alamos, but then later was assigned to office work. After the war, she used this experience to take a position with the Atomic Energy Commission as a contract specialist. Eleanor Stone Roach enlisted in the Women's Army Corps on March 23, 1944. After completing basic training, she was deployed to Los Alamos, New Mexico on May 31, 1944. As a part of the 98th 12th Technical Service Unit, she served as a telephone operator connecting calls across the worksite. In 1945, she married Arno Ronch, who worked as a scientific glassblower at Los Alamos National Laboratory. In her book, Life Within Limits, she writes, Looking back, I can see that these wartime years at Los Alamos were wonderful times. We could look up at the blue sky and the stars that were closer here than I've ever seen them any place else in the world. She told the Atomic Heritage Foundation that she initially wanted to go overseas, but the WAC lieutenant who interviewed her said that there was critical and confidential work to be done elsewhere. She explained, I was very patriotic and wanted to do whatever I could for the war effort. And when she told me this would be harder than overseas, because maybe I would not be getting home until after the war was over, I would not be able to tell my family where I was, that this was important war work. So I was very happy to go. Frederick Lincoln Ashworth graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy on June 1, 1933, and would retire with the rank of Vice Admiral in May of 1966. Ashworth was assigned to the USS Battleship West Virginia. Two years later, he was selected for flight school that he would complete in June of 1936. With the outbreak of World War II, he served in the Pacific Theater on the Amphibious Force Fleet, 
Towards the end of World War II, Ashworth was assigned to the Manhattan Project in Los Alamos, New Mexico in 1944. My job at Los Alamos was to supervise and coordinate the work of engineers in the testing at Windover of bomb components, then being developed at Los Alamos. I don't know who thought that the Los Alamos people needed supervising and coordinating by a young commander, but I was able to run interference for them with the base commander, Colonel Helflin, and I think in useful ways. From Los Alamos, Ashworth was sent to Guam in February 1945 and became the director of the Alberta Project, which was the part of the Manhattan Project responsible for dropping the bombs on Japan. He then served as the weaponeer on the BT-29 boxcar that dropped the second atomic bomb, Fat Man, on Nagasaki. Months after dropping the bombs, Oppenheimer was troubled by the destruction of Nagasaki, by the second bomb, feeling that it wasn't necessary and it was unjustified. In October 1945, while meeting President Truman in the White House, he said, Mr. President, I have blood on my hands, which Truman replied, the blood is on my hands, let me worry about that. He knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Mm -hmm.